Hello. Hi, Madeline. Hey, Lex. Happy Sunday evening. Welcome to another episode of the Atomic Self Love Project here on Spiritual Events Directory. Some of you are viewing this through the Grace Harris Author and Transformational Coach page. Welcome as well. I'd encourage you to jump on uh, Spiritual Events Directory page if you want your comments um, to be seen. Tonight we are going to uh, draw cards uh, from Love Energy, the Divine Affirmations. Hello, Linda. Hi, PJ. Hey, Libby. Um, let me know where you're hitting from, ladies. So I'm just going to be sharing this to a couple more platforms and then we'll get started. Feel free to share also um, to, your, to, to anyone that you feel who might benefit from this. So I'm just going to uh, share this um, for a second. Bear with me. That would be under more options. I'm going to share it to a group. Um, Hello, Michelle from Melbourne. Libby is from Brisbane. Amazing. How are you tonight, ladies? Let me know how you're traveling. So whether it's the start of the week for you, Sunday, or it's the end of the week for you, um, let me know what your vibe is tonight. Um, for me, it's the beginning of the week. It's always um, a restart button for me. The, my day one starts on a Sunday and it ends on a Saturday. I don't know. It's just the way that I've always operated. Nothing, no reason in particular. Uh, Matthew from Louisiana. Um, much love to you as well. Uh, Lisa is from Victoria. Libby, thank you for sharing. So tonight, um, we are, you know, so this show is called the Atomic Self Love Project, and I'm just gonna turn the music down. Not sure if you're actually hearing me with all these. Um, okay, I'm hoping that you have heard that anyway. Um, yeah, so this call is called uh, this show is called the Atomic Self Love Project because. I am someone who believes in two different things about life and about um, ev evolution is that you can either find a cure for your original wounds or you can heal yourself. We are all healers um, in our own right. There's just a difference between an empowered healer and still just a, you know, a, a wounded healer that's still in a disempowered state. But the cure, the cure that I believe is, you know, you can always go out there and find a cure for whatever you feel is an ailment that you have, whether that's a physical ailment or uh, a chronic something that you believe you have, you know, which is really a symptom of what's inside of you. And you can choose to find a cure for that, which is great. It works for a lot of people. But what I found is this, we all have an original wound um, when we are children and when you access that original wound and when you become empowered to connect with that original wound and connect with your inner child and be willing to go through the process and the journey of healing yourself from the inside and out, that becomes an atomic self-love. And so this show is all about love and we're going to access whatever it is that you're going through right now, you're, whether you're going through questions or struggles or, or you know, a particular fluctuating journey about your business, about your personal life relationships, about your physical health, mental health, your career, whatever it is, it all comes back to healing your heart so you can transform your life. And there is no other way ladies and gentlemen, to heal your heart than through finding what true self-love really looks like. So um, I'm going to use my favorite, favorite, favorite deck tonight, which is the um, Divine Energy um, Love Affirmation card. So let me know. I'm going to actually, um, Marianne, thank you for sending stars. That's beautiful. So, um, so we've got Laura as well. Hello, uh, Libby says you can hear me loud and clear. Well, thank you. Um, I, if you forget to, to do to turn things off and you just get carried away and then you, you're not sure. So um, thank you for letting me know. So uh, Marion's from Adelaide. Let's get started. I'm just going to scroll right back up and a, um, 
So I've got, uh, Madeline's actually got like four hands up with four love hearts. So not sure if she wants a reading, but I think I'm going to take that as a yes, please. So I love that energy. Now let's see what's, um, what's up for, um, what's up for you tonight, Madeline, what kind of energy you're vibrating through with tonight. Um, yeah, I love your um, name. Let me just, um, you know, if, if I, I just want to say this, I really, I really look forward to Sunday evenings, like no matter how full on my week has been, and usually Sundays are like family days as well, and it's full on, but no matter how I feel, I always look forward to these evenings with you all, because it's my time to, 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 to dive deep into this side of me that where, where I can really connect with you and you guys understand me and, and you relate to me because um, it feels so good. Connectivity for me is like um, one of the basic elixirs of life that um, allows me to be myself. Madeline, your card is Bridget. So Madeline, the goddess of the eternal flame. I am eternal flame. And each day my light grows brighter. Wow. So this card here, Madeline, is um, Bridget is the goddess of eternal flame. And it's reminding you that there is, well, number one, you're hot. And so you got to access that hotness, whether that's, uh, you, you could be, you know, I don't know um, what you you know how, how you understand hot to be when someone compliments you to be hot but for me eternal flame is just that that passion oozing out of you when you can just um, look at someone throw someone a look and um, they just melt whether you look at your partner or if you look at your children and they just have this love for you that goes oh mama you know just so that eternal flame is actually oozing out of you and if this is something that you haven't been in touch with lately it's reminding you that you are actually quite a passionate person there is an eternal flame inside of you that keeps you going now what is that the question is what is that eternal flame that keeps you going and if it's something that you have not accessed for quite a while now, I encourage you to go back and do some inner child work. There is a link above this video um, to encourage you to join my private Facebook group, which is Empowered Healing and Transformation. And I take you through every now and then some inner child work. And this is where you come back to your original passion. If it's if it's if your flame has not been fanned for a while, uh, Madeline, it's time for you to go back to your original passion and see and feel again how powerful that is and where that can really take you because it is the key to a joy that does not actually burn out you know a joy that's always steady that's always bringing you inspiration when, when you want to draw inspiration from it so beautiful beautiful card for you there all right so let's move on um now our next card here is um libby libby, libby utridge um, from Brisbane. How is Brisbane today? Um, it's really cold. I'm on the border of New South and Queensland. And as you can see, I'm wearing this um, fleece. <laughs> it's cold. I was going to say bloody cold, but I don't know if I'm allowed to swear here. So um, Libby, let me um, pull a card out for you. And you actually have a jumper here. And oh, wow, it's Joan of Arc. So Libby Joan of Arc is the warrior of light. I have a steel like faith in myself. The angels armor me with conviction. As you, not sure if you're familiar with the story of Saint uh, of Joan of Arc, she was only 14 years old when she had the vision that she was the one chosen to defend her community against um, against attack, against um, people that want to conquer um, their their place, their community, and she she fought for them. And she was um, obviously at the time she was deemed to be someone who was possessed by an energy that people did not understand. And she was, uh, I think she was actually assassinated or, or killed for, for her heroic acts. And then um, some 20 years after she was killed, her mother embraced um, uh, the, the case um, of, of Joan again, and then she was canonized and actually was declared um, a saint, uh, Joan of Arc, for fighting for her community. Now, for you, Libby, what that means is that um, 
there is there is a light inside of you that's been called upon that you've known for a long time now whether or not you've acted upon this calling or you haven't acted upon this calling it's time for you to revisit this calling and ask yourself are you really living to your living up to your purpose you know if you if you are living up to your purpose how can you elevate that how can you help more people how can you shed more light to people that really need what you have to say what you do and how you serve now if your calling if your life purpose is something that you know of but you're afraid to tap into because many of us can be in that space we can be afraid to tap into our true purpose our true calling we could be saying to ourselves convincing ourselves i'm okay with what i'm doing right now because it's practical it's what um it it, it i don't know it pays the bills or whatever it is and you convince yourself that tapping into your purpose is just a little bit too hard basket now you are a warrior of light and you are called upon to tap into that because that's really where the atomic self-love and the atomic joy lies within. It's how you become someone who's really lived your life to the fullest. So Libby, my question to you tonight is, are you living your purpose? And if you are, share with us what you do and let me know how I can, how we can help one another um, really elevate and amplify your purpose. And if you haven't tapped into it for any reason at all, um, let me know. Um, join my Facebook group and let's have a private conversation, um, however that looks like for you. Hope that served you tonight. Um, and let me see if we've got some newcomers. Uh, let, uh, let us know where you are actually. Um, uh, Libby says, I'm Reiki. You say Reiki, I think. I think that you should just say, um, no, I'm not shooting on you, but you, you're, um, I feel your energy, um, Libby, that you're, you're going um, Reiki, I think. But it's, it's the heart is saying that. And then the, the ego mind is going, I think, let, let go of the thinking. Just follow it. Follow, open your heart, leave it for just a little bit at a time. There are, there is, there's a thing about purpose, right? There's no time constraints. There's no deadline. There's no time limit. There's no TikTok, you are running out of time. Purpose is not about that. Purpose is about honoring and accessing and opening up to your calling. And if it is Reiki, my love, um, get started because the joy begins when you, I, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, 2010, a good friend of mine, um, uh, Mary O'Donoghue in her deathbed, um, I was sitting with her in her last couple of weeks um, of her life. And I remember her uh, hospital room in Pindara Hospital in the Gold Coast here. And it had like, um, you know, Tibetan banners of uh, the seven chakras and all these um, beautiful things in her hospital room. And I said to her, give me your feet. I just want to massage your feet because there was nothing to do. We were talking and I was just massaging her feet. It was a little bit swollen from the chemotherapy. And she said to me ever so lovingly and ever so quietly, she said, Grace, have you um, thought about becoming a Reiki healer? And it took me a long, long time. I'm talking more than 10 years to even consider the fact that what Mary was saying to me was that I don't know if it's Reiki, my love. I don't know what it is, but I feel your energy, your empowered healing energy. And, you know, she's so alive in my heart right now because she's one of those people that just really knew and believed in my heart, even though I didn't see that in my heart at the time, I wasn't fully healed from my original wounds. So Libby, um, Reiki, I feel yes, girl, there you are. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm um, tapping to your purpose. It's it is the way it's it's amazing when you start to tap into it. Okay, let's move on to um, we've got um, Lex Lexi. Um, yes, any cards for me, please kiss. Well, kiss back to you. Hope you've had a lovely week so far. Let's see what is your um, love energy tonight, Lex, and how you can really um, amplify this. And your jumper is actually Kali. Wow. So powerful for you, Lex. So Kali is like, um, she's the mother of the universe. And her affirmation is, I release 
all that doesn't serve me it's time to be the truth of who i am now if you look at her she's pretty intense so she's got this sword and she's she's got this necklace with the skulls around it and it, it looks a little bit scary but what she does she's that kind of she's this energy when imagine whether i don't know if you have children or maybe nephews or nieces or even pets you know how when you see someone that you really love and you really care about and they're being oppressed by something or someone and you see them suffer and 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 for for a while you you allow them to go through that journey because you know that it allows them to grow but then they get so oppressed that they don't know what to do and they're stuck in a corner and then you just come out with this power where you just you've had enough you just want to rescue them and here i come it's so unapologetic so it's called it's it's saying that your unapologetic self is unstoppable. Now the question is, um, because the question with love, the enemy of love, atomic self love, or love for other people, or love for anything or anyone, the enemy of love is always the ego. So these energies, when they come up for you and remind you of who you truly are, the question that is begged to be asked is that are you sabotaging this love with your ego mind so for you lex when was the last time you have been unapologetic about who you really are and what you're really capable of that's a question for me if you can give me an answer i'll look out for for that in the chat because um interesting this card is just so so powerful all righty so i'm going to um keep going now uh, so, hi, Anna from Melbourne, Australia. Um, wonder what uh, the weather is um, down there. Uh, hey, uh, so we've got um, uh, Marion Dimitriou, so from Adelaide. Love a reading, yes. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> Lex says, certainly makes sense. I haven't in a while. Okay, wow, interesting. Um, yeah, you know, it's so... Uh, it's uh, it's it can get very daunting to be yourself and be unapologetic and to really express your voice. So um, do some uh, do some you know um, chakra exercise for your voice for your for your throat here. Just uh, start with the meditation and maybe go somewhere that's really going to liberate your soul, like a beach or a forest, and just do some just scream out loud and just express yourself first to nature practice that way and then come back to the civilization and actually express from your gut you know who you really just be unapologetic about it um yeah let me know how you go join me in the um, private facebook group the link is above and um let's have a conversation about empowered healing and transformation so let's uh, let me go back to marianne dimitriou um so let me just have a look where is it um here we go. Alrighty. So Marion. Uh, Marion is a name. Is that it's actually a holy name. So I love it. So um, yeah, let me know where you're hailing from. Anyone who's watching us tonight or hanging out with us tonight, um, please do stay if you want. Uh, let's see if we can get to you for a reading. Uh, usually I don't get to everyone. Now, Marian, you've got a jumper as well, and it is my bago. So my bago is the war your saint. I am a warrior of love. My devotion attracts resources and support. Wow. So warrior of love for you, Marian. Warrior of love means that, you know, it's uh, you stand for love. Like it's this is what you are about is that love and sometimes your love is tough love and i do understand that because i myself personally i'm a warrior of love so there are stages of being a warrior of love for you marion so that like i was saying earlier in this video i don't know when you tuned in but you know there are two things in this world about being being well your health and well-being and that's finding a cure from outside yourself whether that is i don't know medication whether that is i don't know massage or finding a cure from outside of yourself and applying it to what you believe is not working well for you whether that's a headache um i don't know a broken bone or a chronic illness that's a, that's one thing that can be for your well-being but the other thing is that we are all healers 
we can move from being disempowered healer to empowered healer. The fact that we are living, breathing, waking up every morning, taking in air, looking at the universe, looking up to the sky, we heal ourselves every day. The only difference is that those light workers, the healers that you know to be light workers and healers, it's they have gone through the journey of being the wounded healer and healed through modalities that they've chosen for themselves, such as yours truly. So, um, you know, so a, a warrior of love could be when I was a disempowered healer, when I was still in my original wound and haven't fully healed. I was a warrior of love, yes, but I was not able to show it the way that I wanted it to be understood. Like people, especially when I say people, it'll be my immediate family, my children, my partner, always understood my love as overprotective, over warrior. And um, so it was like a, almost like a self-sabotage kind of warrior kind of love until I moved into the empowered healing stage where I can transmute any negative energy into something that is understandable and acceptable to everyone to be caring, loving. It allows everybody to be receptive of the way that you love them. So let me know if this is resonating for you, because I know, Marion, you are someone who stands for love. But often when we have not moved into the empowered healing and empowered transformation, the love that we show is still a little bit um, askewed um, from the perspective and from the perception of other people. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me know how that lands for you, because it's such a strong, strong card that really is calling you to to ask yourself the question as to um, how am I loving people right now? And how am I loving myself right now? Yeah, because sometimes, um, you know, uh, a very basic example, um, I was a single mother for a long time. And my thing was that I'm going to show my kids the love that I've never had as a child. And so what happened was that I overcompensated for it. And because I overcompensated for it, the love that I wanted them to feel was not quite the way that I want intended it to be felt. So I was a warrior of love, but because I wasn't fully healed at the time, then it wasn't being received as well as my intention was. So being a warrior of love, you've got to ask yourself the question, where am I in my journey to spreading the love that is just burning right inside of me? So let us know if you're still here, Marianne, and how that lands for you. Let's move on to the next person. And I have here, um, so, uh, hmm, interesting. I am scrolling down. We have, um, so Laura sharing that your her partner is always um, sick, okay. Sending your partner some vibes, self-healing vibes. That's important. Um, okay, let's Matthew sent some stars. Thank you for that. Um, Nadine, first time from Sunshine Coast. Welcome. Would love a card if you're pulling cards. I will pull a card for you. So, um, yeah, if you're still here, Nadine, let me know. I will... Um, Look at so sunny coast is a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, how was the weather there tonight uh, today? So um, let's have a look. Okay, love your purple hearts vibe. Um, it's very, very um, healing actually. Um, purple is the color of um, transformation and healing. So Nadine, um, your energy tonight when it comes to the love that lives inside of your heart is Mary Magdalene, the apostle to the apostles. I am the bridge between heaven and earth. I am fully human and fully divine. Wow. So, um, yeah. So, Nadine, this is powerful. So, as you know, the story of Mary Magdalene is that she she really is the bridge between heaven and earth because she was the one who could pass messages to be understood between 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 Jesus and and the apostles she was like the bridge between the apostles and Jesus and so for you this is like you have the ability to translate 
um, essence into form, to translate feelings into messages. So you have, when it says here that you are the bridge between heaven and earth, this is nothing to do actually with um, what's up above and what's down below. We are all, heaven and earth is one and here now, and we are all living in it, right? And because you are the bridge between heaven and earth, you are someone who can read people's energies and help them translate it into a message that they want to be able to express. So are you surrounded? The question here is, are you surrounded by people who have this, who have, you know, who lack the ability to express energies and love and strong emotions that are bubbling up inside of them? And are they looking to you to help them shape that expression, shape that message, shape that, you know, unapologetic side of themselves? Because chances are they are looking to you. You have that ability. And whether or not you're, um, you're aware, fully aware or conscious of this ability, I don't know. So let's, let's assume two different things here that one, you are conscious of it, you know about it. So are you really, you know, are, are you living to that purpose? Are you, are you, you know, looking after yourself well enough so that your energy is always there, not just to serve others, but also to maintain that ability inside of you so it doesn't weigh you down because it is a big responsibility. Now, the other assumption is that you don't know, you're not aware of this power, that you have the ability to translate energies into a message of expression for other people around you. Then it's time for you to really look into it. So just observe. Um, and how that looks like is this, you know, if you're when you're converse, conversing with someone, when you're talking to someone and they're trying to explain something to you and you find yourself feeling that you understand how they feel, not just what they're saying from their ego mind, but how they're actually feeling. You've got a deep sense of empathy. You are like a natural empath, like you actually can feel what they feel and that's your that's your big big sign that you are that's that's what be, uh, being a bridge between heaven and earth is is that you're able to empathize you're an empowered empath where you can feel their energy you understand it and you can help them express it for themselves so let me know um how you feel about that that's beautiful um so i've got some so nadine yeah so uh so, so Nadine says so spot on. Um, oh, it's uh, scrolling up. <laughs> um, not done enough self care and self love lately. Have just prioritized that time for me again. Beautiful work, amazing. Um, I feel energies all the time. Absolutely an empath. Yes. So you are definitely a Mary Magdalene. So love. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. I'm just gonna scroll up again. Uh, my eyes are a little bit okay so let's um start with okay guys just bear with me here um <laughs> it's okay so i think it was donna i'm i'm hoping it's donna next so um it's it's like scrolling up way too fast for me um I'm actually, I'm seeing Donna, so bear with me. Uh, okay, let's just, let's go with Donna. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to like, go back and then um, start from the top so I can go chronologically. So I do apologize if I miss some people, but yeah, so let's go. Um, so Donna would love a card, please, with a purple love heart. Thank you for that purple love heart. Uh, the energy for that for me is just so soothing in my heart. <sighs> I'm getting a lot of purple love hearts tonight. And so this is why I love hanging out here every Sunday evening, because it just fills my cup, gets me ready for my week. So Donna, my card for you tonight is, and we are getting the energy of um, Queen Esther, the morning star. My ego is in service of my soul and I trust my soul's divine timing. Wow, this is amazing because, um, so Queen Esther, the morning star, see this, um, she's got that headdress, the 
and and there's that light behind her, which is the morning star. And her ego, she she makes her ego to be in service of her soul and I trust my soul's divine timing. So this is a very so it's saying to you, Donna, that you have the potential to evolve so high that you can actually use your ego, your thinking mind to serve your soul. And not many people can do this. One of the people, you know, um, there are a few people that I can name, but they're really, really like they're classed as in, in our new age world. They're like the high spiritual masters, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Eckhart Tolle, the guy who wrote um, The Power of Now. These are people who have come who have come from their ego mind and use that ego mind to serve the soul. If you if you haven't read the book, The Power of Now, like um, Eckhart Tolle himself, his suffering came from the fact that he was a thinker. He was an, um, an academic. He was a professor. And he was in so much pain because of his thinking, thinking. And you, if you if you research into Wayne Dyer, his past now, he's written multiple books. It's, it's He's gone to a place where his ego mind where he can produce books has is serving the purpose of his soul and not many people have been able to demonstrate this on that on that scale so this card is allowing you to see donna that you have that potential in fact we all have this potential but just to to be to be fully expressed in an energy like this that you are someone who can consciously choose to use your ego mind to serve your soul and I must admit, this is one. This is something that I have um, really pushed myself to do. I have, uh, for those of you who are not aware, um, or actually you can see it behind me. I wrote the book "Become the Woman of Your Dreams," which is the story of my life. Released it last year, and it was really, you know, the, the thing about this book is. Um, once it was released, what I realized is that I don't own the story because the story happens to all of us. It was just my version. And for me to be able to use the, the ego mind, which is my memories of what happened to me and put it down into the soul work that I've done to heal is I'm able to show people that you have your own healing modalities lying deep inside of you. You are someone who can heal yourself. It begins with the expression of love for yourself with the atomic self love. It's not an easy, I'm not saying it's easy, <laughs> um, far from easy. But the question is, what is harder than healing? The harder thing is staying where we are, staying in our wounded selves, staying in our pain, in our trauma. And, and, and a life of pain, a life of trauma, no thank you. No thank you. So um, it's not easy, but it is always the better way. It's always the more joyful way. So yeah, very, very powerful for you, Donna. Queen Esther. Okay, let me just um, fix my comments and see if I can um, go back <laughs> um, from the top so I can go chronologically. Um, maybe I should go from the bottom. <laughs> okay, now come on technology, work with me here. Okay, so I've got... Um, all right, so... Uh, so Donna, I hope that served you tonight. Let me know um, how you feel about that. Ginia, may I have a card, please? So Ginia Carbone. Um, right, it's running down again. So Gina Carbone. All right. So Gina, um, I actually can't see your um, comment now because it's actually moved up again. But um, I do hear you, my love. So let's um, pull out a card for you. Um, Hope you can hear me from actually have to maybe turn that music down again so gina your card tonight is oh saraswati the goddess of self-knowledge the essence of who i am flows effortlessly into everything i create wow so Saraswati is the goddess of self-knowledge for you, Gina. This is a card that encourage that is encouraging you to keep going with your evolution. So this is this is a woman who's um she's always she, wherever she was in her journey, she knew that who she is is enough. 
And that is the message. Where you are right now, you are perfect as you are, and you are more than enough. And what it is, is that you need to translate everything, every challenges, every achievement that you've experienced in the past to draw from those, use those challenges and achievements as your power to actually translate every power that you have and help heal yourself and help heal other people. And when I say heal other people, I'm not saying, you know, not every one of us want to become light workers. Not every one of us want to be, want to do Reiki, you know, like Libby or want to do um, NLP or whatever it is. When I say heal yourself and heal others, whatever it is that you're passionate about doing, you could be someone who's passionate about doing accounting for businesses because you, you, you see the actual import. You really truly believe that that changes their business, that changes their life. Whatever it is that you're passionate about doing, that's your version of helping heal others. Go for it. But this card is saying to you that you are enough. You got to draw from that past experience and achievement and trend Translate that into the power that you have. So Gina, are you acting upon your self-knowledge, the essence of who you are? Are you using that to create now? To create now, not, not say I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that when or I will help others when? There's no when, it's now. It's now you are enough, you are perfect. So I hope that served you tonight. Um, uh, so let's, uh, Matthew saying, my solar plexus is in fire. This is strong light work. Thank you. Um, so let's, um, I'm just gonna scroll back up again. My technology um, abilities tonight are a little bit confused. Um, okay, so let's have Christine Marie Clark. Please, can I have a card? And, and then I'll go to Grace because it come up. Um, so, uh, so Christine's got like sunflowers for me. Thank you. I love that. Uh, thank you. So Christine, I'm going to pull out a card for you. Thank you for the flowers. You actually have a jumper and it's um, uh, interesting. Let's have a look. Wow, Emoja. Okay, Christine, you've got the, uh, the, the, well, the goddess of all that flows. I am an ocean of creativity, creative energy. I give birth to what exists within me. So Emoja is a mermaid and she's all about buoyancy and flow. So um, Christine, this is calling you to rise above every dense energy that is around you so you have the power to just float up and just rise above that dense energy dense energy you know like anything that's heavy anything that's negative so it's and it's it's allowing you to to use your creative energy to flow and to be buoyant and to rise above so you have a creative side christine share with me what that is you know um even if you're doing a job that's um, that's left brain, which is analytical, you have a side of you that's creative. I don't know if you're tapping into that now or you haven't tapped into that for a while, but it's it's just this card is allowing you to remember that your creative side is going to lift you from all that negativity that's um, impending to happen or is happening right now whether that's hostilities whether that's argument even if it's just worry or a little bit of panic about something that's been sitting at the back of your mind the way to rise above that is to tap into your creative energy I don't know do you love dancing um, when was the last time you were you, you've danced to music do you love to sing to sing um, yeah take your friends to a karaoke um, do you love to cook? Like, just remember, what is that creative your energy that just allows you to just, you know, to, you just rise above? Because the thing with, uh, uh, this, and this is so common, is that when we have worries and problems and anxieties, we tend to think our way through it. And it's just not the, the more we think our way through it, the more we sink and sink and sink and just feel heaviness. 
It's because we are using the brain, which has caused the worry and the overthinking in the first place. And so you don't use your ego mind to fix something that it had created in the first place. You use your creative side, which comes from your heart, from your instinct, from your intuition. And then you rise above all that heaviness. So Christine, share with me, what is your creative energy? Love to hear. Maybe it's something that's really unique. You know, it could be, oh, I don't know, uh, what kind of craft do you do? Very interesting. Okay, so I had a, um, I saw a request from uh, Grace before, but I just want to find again, because um, I've actually, uh, I've lost uh, the thread. Uh, there's, so let me go back to, where are you? Grace Wing. Hello, Grace. May I have a reading if drawn? Yes, Grace. Um, love to pull out a card for you. And let me know if you're still here. So we're actually, um, cards are going out. Okay. All right, let's uh, just center here for Grace. Um, beautiful name, by the way, Grace. Okay, so um, the card that is coming out for you is, you have two. Wow. Marguerite Peretti, the mystic of divine love. Love is divine and I'm nothing except love. Rita of Kaskia, the patroness of impossible causes. I am miraculous. My prayers create powerful channels of possibility. So Rita was um, married off a very, very young. She's, for, she's, a, she's a saint from Italy. And then um, her family, her husband um, had died um, when she was young as well. And she ended up living until she was 88 or something. And she, you know, it's the impossible she made possible through physical healing and just the longevity of her life, even though she gave birth really early and suffered through illnesses. And so the it's the, this card is about longevity for you, Grace. And this is the mystic of divine love. So combined because the two of them came up for you it's what's going to keep you sustained is that um you have the ability in, you you're, you're a bit like an eagle so imagine yourself grace as an eagle flying above a mountain all right and the mountain i'm talking about is the the mountain of your life which is your life experiences now there's a difference between being an eagle flying above your own mountain of life experiences than actually being a human standing on your own mountain of life experiences. The difference is that when you're standing on your own mountain of value, mountain of life experiences, you don't see the whole big picture of what your power is because it's underneath your feet. It's hard to look down and see everything. But when you're an eagle flying above your own mountain of value of life experiences, you can see every little thing, the tree, the swamp, the river, the you know, the bear, the wolf, everything that's in your mountain of life experiences. And as an eagle, you've got perspective down below and perspective um, before you, futuristic perspective. So this one here, um, the love that's in your heart will allow you to create miracles and to actually sustain the future that you want to create. So just, this is calling you to, to get back to your perspective, Grace. Get back to your perspective. Like, you know, um, where I live, we have um, in our veranda, uh, there's this far away, like there's this really big power pole, like massive, right? But when I look at it and I go like this with my, with my hand, it fits in my two little fingers, the massive power pole. But if I stood next to it over there, it'd be like, I'd be that small next to it. So I have perspective because I'm looking at it from the big picture. So it's calling you to use that love here to look at the big picture. So let go of the worries, let go of the concerns, let go of the fear and use the love to see the big perspective. Come from love to see the big perspective. Open your heart, Grace, open your heart. 
Hope that served you tonight. So let's keep moving in the essence of time. Um, ladies and guys, don't forget to uh, join me on my private Facebook group, um, The Empowered Healing and Transformation. Um, the link is above the video. And um, let's, uh, yeah, let's have some fun in there. It's about empowered healing. So let's um, go down to... Um, so Danielle, uh, Danielle, hi Grace, my first time watching from Queensland, anything for me, please. Okay, so Danielle, um, you guys are picking up that I love purple hearts, and so I'm getting all the purple hearts tonight. Right, so um, Danielle, where are you from Queensland from? Is it like over the border, like we, we could be neighbors? <laughs> okay, so um, Danielle, um, yeah, let's... Uh, just feel into your energy tonight. Okay. I'm picking up. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Zhu Wanjing, the mystic of peace. I am peace. When my mind is clear, the way is clear. So Zhu Wanjing is, is a peace warrior. And by peace, it's all about clearance. It's all about just clearance. You know, when um, imagine yourself um, in a, so, um, so Danielle, imagine yourself in a jungle. And in a jungle, there is, there are no roads. There are, it's a virgin jungle. And life is always a virgin jungle. No one life, no two lives are the same. Your life will never be the same as mine. So uh, a life is always a jungle. There is no rule book. There is no, there is, it does, you can't, you don't know what's going to happen. It's all a virgin jungle. And our job is to clear our way through. So the mystic of peace is all about clearance. It's all about calming the mind it's all about um making sure that your way is 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 you you're making the way for you so you're paving the way for yourself and clearing it so it's it's a, it, instead of going through blindly and hoping that you're going to actually end up in in some kind of a clearance you make it for yourself so it's diligence and um, diligence and really mindfulness and mindfulness it's literally it literally means mindfulness like calming yourself and taking the time to to observe your thoughts you know to to actually um get to a place to become the observer that when you think something that is a thought that you own but that is not you yeah so a little a, a bit of a quick exercise for everyone here is that um when the mystic of peace for to get clearance and and to to act in a from a place of clearance and from a clear mind from mindfulness is that you can choose your thoughts anytime so if you close your eyes and I say to you, think of a warm chocolate cake and just imagine how beautiful that is. You just want to eat it, right? And then I want you to hold that in your mind in between your eyebrows for three seconds on the count of three. Hold it one, two, and three. And I want you to let that chocolate cake go and make your mind clear. Let it go. Let it go. And the reason that you've let it go is because you made the choice. Because you have the choice what to think. Because these thoughts are yours to operate. They are not you. You own these thoughts, but they are not you. It's like you're the observer. You've got a remote control. Next, I don't like that thought. That's not a useful thought, not a useful belief. No, it's not going to serve me. Next, I'm going to find another one. That's that's the way to mindfulness. So for you, Danielle, what are the thoughts that are serving you? You know, what are the thoughts that are not useful for you, that are disempowering, that are heavy, that are negative? You can just chuck them away because they're like no good. You can just create new thoughts and even examine the ones that you have been using and see 
where they have got you so far do you need brand new thoughts you know i in 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 a program that i run called the atomic self love project it's a small group coaching program it's it's running at the moment so you can't get in there and it's going to run again with a fresh batch next um june um, so in next month, I mean, so inside of that group coaching, I talk about the paradigms of self-love and in the paradigms of self-love, it's all about being able to, to sort through your beliefs and, um, and, and really examine these beliefs, have they served you and are they fear-based or are they fearless? And based upon your goal, what are the beliefs that you need to be acquiring right now and creating right now that's going to be useful for you so you can come from fearless paradigms of beliefs and take fearless decisions and make fearless actions, unprecedented, never heard of actions that mostly frowned upon by your friends and family because they've never seen you do it before. And it's going to change your life because you can only you're the only one who can change your life if you want to change your life yeah you don't have to change your life it's your life but if you're sitting in a place where you're thinking oh you know this just is i just wish this or i just wish that stop wishing because you can actually change the thoughts that you use to operate your life like a remote control so that's that's that mindfulness that being um for you danielle being the mystic of peace being mindful and the way is clearance yeah so um matthew thank you for the stars and then um we've got uh let's just let's see how many more readings i can squeeze in i've got a few minutes to go um angela says i love eckhart he's such an inspiration he has a podcast with um oprah's new earth seven parts so helpful oh yes i love um um, yeah, so, oh, just, uh, just, so Angela's just mentioned Eckhart Tolle, so just follow on, following on, on the, on the clearing of the mind from Zhu Wanjing for, that was a reading for, um, for Danielle, is that there's this podcast with Oprah and Eckhart Tolle, and I encourage you to look for it, I can't remember what it's called for the life of me, because I've listened to so many, but in Oprah's Super Soul Sunday podcast, at the, at the end of every um, session, she would ask her, her guest speaker um, these questions. She'd just fire this series of questions to, to get quick answers, like let's say five questions. And so it was Eckhart Tolle was, was her um, guest on this episode. And she was firing these questions at the end of the episode saying, uh, you know, the question something like, what's your favorite food? Um, where were you born? Or um, what are you wearing right now? And one of the questions was, what do you actually, what do you believe to be true? And Eckhart Tolle's answer was, nothing in particular and they just both cracked up laughing because it's a classic right this is the number one spiritual teacher that we have right now living breathing spiritual teacher and he's you know he's not attached to any particular knowledge and belief that he has because he is a living breathing observer of his thoughts and Danielle, this can't be more appropriate for you. Um, you clear the, the way to your um, joy, inner joy, is just the, the mindfulness, just the clearance, and just um, observing your thoughts. Are they serving you or are they not? And, and how are you going to acquire more useful beliefs? Um, yeah, I can't wait for you to join me in my private Facebook group. Let's have some really good conversations there. So um, now let us... Um, uh all right so rosana says rosana is coney i'm still here any messages would be appreciated um yes so let's do that for you rosana and um now uh they, wow you've got a jumper i'm just going to pick that up for you and it's a matarasu oh fun so Amaterasu is the goddess of light, Rasana. We are all sacred mirrors reflecting back the same light. So the story of Amaterasu is that, um, so she's a goddess of light. Now she was having this, um, uh, she was having a fight with her brother. Little, there were children at the time. And she was so upset that she went and hid herself inside of a cave because she's the goddess of light. She took all her light with her. And when she hid in that cave because she was upset, the whole world went dark because she took her light with her. And so then what happened is this, this, uh, the, the, uh, there's another, um, there's another, uh, God of laughter, um, that, uh, came, 
came running into the front of the cave and took a mirror and placed a mirror in front of the cave and started to sing. They started to sing to call her out. And Amaterasu became very, very interested with the song. And when she started to step out of the cave, bringing, be mindful that she's got light everywhere around her because she's the goddess of light. So she brings with her her own light whenever, whenever she moves. So she moves and then she looks out, outside the cave to see what was happening. What, where was the laughter and the song coming from? And then she sees this mirror and she didn't doesn't realize it's a mirror and then she but but she sees this um reflection of a beautiful woman surrounded by light and the next thing she was so overjoyed by that by that image which un, un, unbeknownst to her it was only her own reflection that she started to laugh and started to she, she just it was enticing her to come out and so she came out of the cave and 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 started laughing and singing bringing light back to the world now how is this story relevant to you rosana <clears throat> so this card is saying to you that when you feel upset when times are tough for you rosana when you're in pain in your heart and you're having some troubles and you tend to go inside of you inside that cave whatever that is, is that a mental cave emotional cave or it's a literal cave that you go into you take away the light that you bring to the world and so you know um your family may be sad when you're sad your children are sad when you're sad because they can feel it now this card is encouraging you that sometimes when we can't see our own light because we're hurting we've got to look towards other people of how they see us so it's taking back the taking back your attention to your children to your family to the people that love you who see you for who you truly are and mirroring what they see in you and acknowledging that they see you for your life and taking that back in it's that, it's that mirror kind of work like really when you can't see your own light look at the people that love you to remind you who you truly are that is because you are a goddess of light. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping that's um, something that's very specifically resonating with what's happening in your life right now, because I feel that that card did not come out, did not jump out for no reason. So if you have been hiding some light away from the world because of some pain, it's time for you to look out to the people that love you to remind you of your own light of who you truly are and 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 this love that you bring to the world allow them to remind you of your light yeah all right so i can squeeze in i believe um add one more because uh, i've got two minutes uh, which is exciting <laughs> um uh trees teresa says shared times 10 thank you love um so I, um, Carrie, may I have a card, Grace? Okay, um, so Carrie, wow, blue, two blue diamonds. I love that. Thank you. I love emojis, as you can already tell. I'm uh, someone who, when I do my journaling um, every, every day, so I'll just show you. I've got my old journals here right in front of me. So I love to just journal. And I encourage you, ladies, if you're not into journaling yet, this really changed um, my life a few starting a few years back when I was um, I always like put um, love hearts and stars and smiley faces just like emojis because I love I just love shapes that's my doodle that's my creative side someone someone had a creative um, energy that's being encouraged whoa that was for you there Carrie and it is did you see that and that's um Khadija the mother of believers so i am spiritually and financially abundant i provide heaven and earth for myself wow mm. you are the queen goddess of self-sufficiency that's what it's um that's that's what it's saying so even this is really strong for you carrie because even the emojis that you chose are diamonds which really resonates with the way that you're, you know, yeah, just, um, it's interesting how you resonated with the diamond, which is a symbol of, um, a symbol of actual financial wealth. And this has come up for you. You know, I'm spiritually and financially abundant. I provide heaven and earth for myself, very self-sufficient. So now again, uh, because this is a divine love um, energy, the question here is if you are not accessing this energy at the moment, what's stopping you to become that because you already are that 
And so ask your ask you ask come from your soul and examine your ego mind as to what's blocking you from that financial and spiritual abundance. That is your birthright. Yeah. And if it's not, if there's no blocks at the moment, then how do you flow outflow that into so that you can access more people so that you can ripple effect that abundance that's just overflowing from you? Perhaps it's time for you to explore um, what more can you do? Yeah. This has been an amazing night. Um, yeah, I love, I've loved your energy tonight, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to say goodbye now, but I will see you again next Sunday evening at 7.15 on the Atomic Self-Love Project. So thank you so much. Good night.